an inverse function, which is what we're going to look at in this lesson, is the operation or action that inverses or undoes an original action or operation. So for example, standing up and sitting down are inverse operations or actions. Um, opening a door, closing a door, adding 3, subtracting 3 are inverse operations, multiplying by 6, dividing by 6, squaring a number, square rooting. So those are all examples of inverse operations. By definition, the inverse function is the reflection of the function in the line y equals x. So we'll look at that when we start to graph and I'll explain what that means. So the inverse function is denoted by this um, f to the superscript negative 1x. So that's not, a, a, that's not an exponent, it's indicating that this is the inverse of a function. So remember that we can express functions in a couple of different ways. One of them is graphs, uh, ordered pairs, and equations. Those are the three main ways we represent functions. So if we want to find the inverse of a graph, we are going to take some key points on that graph. Uh, we're going to switch the x and the y, or, and then we're going to plot the new points. And then we're going to connect them in the same order as the old points. So what does that mean? So for example, here we have a graph. So the points have been labeled here as negative 2, 0, 0, 5, and 1, 3. So negative 2, 0, the inverse would be 0, negative 2. We switch the x and the y. 0, 5, its inverse would be 5, 0. And 1, 3 its inverse would be 3, 1. So if we plot these new points, negative 2, 0 would become 0, negative 2, which is approximately there. 0, 5 would become 5, 0, which is approximately here. And then 3, 1, 3 would become 3, 1, which is approximately here. And so we're going to join them in the same order. So we're going to start with 0, negative 2. We're going to go to 5, 0. Oops, that was not the right one. So we're going to go from 0, negative 2, to 5, 0, to 3, 1. And so this is the inverse of this original function, which we'll just call f of x. We don't need to know the equation. We're just drawing the inverse. So how is that a reflection in y equals x? Well, y equals x is the line where x and y have the same coordinates. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on. Negative 1, negative 1. This is the line y equals x. So that is the reflection line. So the um, definition of an inverse function is the reflection of the function in the line y equals x. So in order to do that with a graph, we just switch the x and y coordinates of key points on that graph. So you don't have to do it for every point, um, but you want to pick some key points that give it its shape. So here, 3, 0 would become 0, 3. 2, negative 2 would become negative 2, 2. And then 3, 1 would become 1, 3. So let's just write them out here. So I'm going to write the original points. 3, 0, 2, negative 2, and 3, 1. And I just noticed there's an error here. So that's not 3, 0. That is negative 3, 0. So it's a bit of an error there. So that's why my graph wasn't looking correct. So let's erase these. And so negative 3, 0 would become 0, negative 3. 2, negative 2 would become negative 2, 2. And 3, 1 would become 1, 3. So let's plot those. So 0, negative 3 is down here. Negative 2, 2 is up here. And then 1, 3 is up here. So we're going to join in the same order. 0, negative 3 to 2, negative 2 to 1, 3. And then here's our reflection line, y equals x. So you can see that this 
is a reflection. The blue and the red are reflection or mirror images of each other where green, the green line y equals x would be the mirror line. If you have ordered pairs or table of values, it's very simple. It's what we just did here. So g negative 1 of x or the inverse of g of x, we would just switch the coordinates of each point. So negative 3, 1 would become 1, negative 3. Negative 1, 4 would become 4, negative 1. 1, 7 would become 7, 1. And 3, 11 would become 11, 3. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. The third way we can represent functions or relations is if we have an equation. So we're going to do the same process. We want to switch x and y. So if it is in the form f of x, we need to replace f of x with y. Then we're going to switch x and y. Then we're going to isolate back for y. And then we'll replace y with the inverse notation. So here, f of x I'm going to replace with y. I'm going to switch x and y. So y becomes x and x becomes y. And now we want to isolate for y to get it back into y equals form. So make sure you do it in the correct order. So first thing I'll do is kind of think of bed mass backwards. So anything that's added is going to go first. Do the same on the other side. So x minus 4 is 1 half y. The inverse of dividing by 2 is multiplied by 2. Make sure that you multiply the whole side by 2. Don't just put the 2. If you do this, that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing as this. Right? So make sure that the 2 is multiplied both terms because we're doing it last. So order matters when you're isolating for y. Here we have f of x is, oh, and I forgot to replace it with the inverse notation f negative 1 of x. Okay, so here f of x is 3x squared minus 2. I'm going to replace f of x with y. We're going to switch x and y. So y becomes x, x becomes y, and then we're going to isolate for y. So the first thing I'll do is add the 2, right? It's minus 2, so I'm going to add 2 to the other side. The next thing I'll do is divide by 3. So we get x plus 2 over 3 equals y squared. And the last thing I want to do is inverse that square. So we're going to square root, right? Square root to get rid of it. So the inverse function will be the square root of x plus 2 over 3. One thing to keep in mind when we square root is that there's a positive and negative answer that is possible. Because, for example, if you square root 4, you could have 2 because 2 times 2 is 4. You could also have negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4. So generally when we square root, unless it tells us not to, we put a plus minus in front because you could have a positive or negative answer. Okay, in this question, f of x equals 2 so if you're going to make any errors, it's because you do it in the wrong order. So remember that we are going to do bed mass backwards, right? Bed mass order of operations puts it together. So if we do it in reverse, we are going to take it apart. So add, subtract goes first. Anything multiplied goes next. Then we look at exponents and any brackets. Okay, so f of x will replace with y. We're going to switch. So y becomes x, x becomes y. And then we're going to inverse the operation. So anything added, subtracted goes first. So this plus 5 is going to go first. It's going to be minus 5. Uh, I would strongly suggest not to be lazy and try to do everything at once. Do it step by step so you do it in the right order. Next, I'm going to get rid of anything that's multiplied. So the 2. So we'll divide by 2. Then I'm going to do exponents. So I want to get rid of that square. So I'm going to square root. Don't forget the plus minus. And then finally, once we've uh, square rooted, we can now remove brackets. Now we're on the brackets, so now we can add one. So it's going to be the square root and then plus one. So make sure you're doing it in the proper order. Um, 
So there are some practice questions. I should have put this on the next page, but there's some practice questions you can do where you're just looking for the inverse function in question one. So this is question one. And then in the second question, it gives you two functions and it wants to know, are they inverses of each other? So is f of x and g of x inverses? If they are, great. If they're not, then rewrite the proper solution. And then these are the answers. So here's your answers to one, the inverse functions, and then two, you can see which ones are correct and the incorrect ones, it has the proper um, function. So if you want some extra practice, you can try these.